Till Death is the first story we've covered that doesn't take place in the United States, expanding the scope of the series. Directed by Chris Wallace, written by Jerry Barcalon, and shot by John R. Leonetti. Based on a story from the Vault of Horror number 28, the TV show takes a much different approach to the premise of the comic, and for the most part, it is successful. Plantation owner Steve waits at a dock in Haiti. His soon-to-be wife, Donna, is coming in by ship, and he has spent years turning the land into a home fit for the woman of his dreams. The two see each other and cannot contain their excitement. Steve brings Donna to his plantation deep within the jungle, where a minister marries the two of them that very day. Months of happiness follow, until one day, while out for a walk, Donna stumbles and falls. She comes down with a fatal fever and succumbs to the disease that night. The show begins with landowner Logan being introduced to wealthy Margaret at a party. Unlike the couple in the comic, these two are very much not in love. The trip down here was an absolute nightmare. They have the nerve to call the service first class. What they really should call it, of course, is steerage. You said she was a tad high strung. She's a bitch on wheels. And Logan is still trying to get his plantation built. Logan's assistant comes rushing in. An accident has happened. One of Logan's workers has been killed by falling into quicksand. Unfortunate for his construction plans, the entire plot of land he's bought is nothing but quicksand infested swamp. If you're going to build here, it's going to take more money than God! It will take money well beyond his means to build here. In need of millions of dollars for his business venture, Logan attempts to woo Margaret, and she is not buying what he's selling. A boorish young hustler. Good night, Mr. Andrews. The next day, Logan pays a visit to his ex, a voodoo priestess. The two aren't on the best of terms, but she gives him a love potion for Margaret. Her instructions... You give her one drop, she become your wife. But if you give her two, she be yours for life. Later that night, Logan tries to convince Margaret to invest in the construction of his plantation. She doesn't like his pitch, and she doesn't like him. I think it's a bad risk. And you, Mr. Andrews, are bad news. As the two talk, he slips a single drop of the potion into her drink, and things start to heat up. And I believe it's going to get even hotter. <sighs> Over my dead body. Good night, Logan. And good riddance. Denied. After that little fake out, she comes to Logan's room as he tries to sleep. She's much friendlier now. She can't stay away from him and insists that he calls her Maggie. Can I, uh, get you anything? Uh-huh. You. After spending the night together, Logan mixes several drops of the love potion into Maggie's morning champagne. The two drink to their undying love. Meanwhile, Logan's ex is seemingly up to something, as Maggie begins convulsing and shouting the same chant as the priestess. The doctor has no idea what's wrong with her. She dramatically proclaims to Logan that she will always love him. I'll always love you! Forever and ever! And then she drops dead. Both Steve and Logan have their wives buried in the jungle. Steve is despondent. His faithful servant Jebko can't stand seeing him like this. Steve confides in Jebko that he would do anything to have Donna back and to be with her forever. Anything. Logan, however, is furious with his voodoo priestess ex for concocting the potion that killed Maggie. You killed her. Me? I only made it. You give it to her. That night, while drunk, Logan laments the loss of his big payout at Margaret's grave. Without warning, her hands reach out from the dirt. She has no memory of dying. Oh, damn, I broke another nail. Forget your nails, you're alive! And is still madly in love with him. The comic's resurrection is more elaborate. Unbeknownst to Steve, Jebko takes Donna from her grave and into the jungle, where he and others hold a voodoo ritual. Suddenly, she lives again. The next morning, she awakens Steve with a kiss, and all is well once more. For a short time. After a few days, Steve notices the smell, whereas Logan notices the smell almost immediately as Maggie makes him breakfast. 
Donna and Margaret are still technically dead, and their bodies are starting to decay. The mindless zombie is obsessed with Steve and won't leave him alone. Her skin rots, and the smell isn't made any better by the heat of the jungle. Days turn into weeks, Donna smells really rank. Steve's servants don't seem to mind, but Steve himself can't even eat and is going quite mad. He can't stand his undead wife anymore. He shoots her, stabs her, tries to drown her, but only succeeds in making her look worse. Finally, he ties her up, takes her up in the helicopter, and pushes her out over the densest part of the jungle he can find. Days pass, and Steve feels relief. The smell still lingers, but Steve believes everything will be normal once again. One evening, Jebco rushes for Steve's attention. Donna has come back. Margaret decays at a much faster rate than Donna. She can also speak, and doesn't seem to have a problem with murder. Logan realizes his folly with the potion and shoots her multiple times, killing her once again. I can't have killed her. She's already dead. Logan. But she's quick to forgive him. Logan runs into the jungle and the rapidly rotting Maggie is right behind him. It looks like it's all over for Logan as he steps into the quicksand, but his love is there to pull him free, only to be set on fire and pushed into the quicksand herself. Logan believes he is finally rid of zombie Maggie, until... I'm back! Logan and Steve can't take it anymore. If they can't get rid of their zombified darling, they would rather end their own life with a bottle of poison. I love this reaction for Maggie. The death of our protagonist is not the end of his story. He is awakened through a native ceremony. Horrified, he is greeted by the love of his life, or now, the love of his death. What makes the comic book's version of Till Death stand out to me is that it's a story of one person's love gone terribly wrong. The TV show is yet another tale of a gold digger getting their comeuppance, something we've seen at least four times in the series so far. The bits of humor were appreciated, and the special effects makeup is appropriately grotesque. The skeleton's tongue at the very end is an especially gruesome touch. But overall, I have to say I enjoyed the comic more. Having a protagonist slowly lose his mind over days while he's helpless to watch his beloved gradually decay had a more lasting impact on me. The show ultimately came down to a chase scene featuring an unlikable protagonist. Both versions are worth seeking out, but the comic is the one that will be with me forever. <laughs> <laughs>